Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to cover editing style of the default drop down UI component. This will include the hover state, the selected state, and making changes to the drop down menu. Part of this video will cover some of the features of the UI debugger. If you would like a dedicated video to the tool, then let me know in the comments. We're starting in the settings screen. There's already a drop down for changing the resolution. It has some of the basic styling that's being used across the rest of the projects. However, as soon as I hover over it, we can see it just goes gray, has this weird circle, the actual text shows up, and if we click on it, the drop down is white with the blue highlight. We want to change all of this to match the rest of the theme. Now, by default, this can be very difficult in the UI builder, as in that situation, there isn't actually any new components that show up when you click the drop down itself. To see what we're working on, we're actually going to move into the UI Toolkit debugger, which you can find in the window menu uh, under UI Toolkit. For anyone familiar with web development, this should feel very common as the F12 debugger menu that you'd find in your web browser. On the left hand side, we can see all of the elements that are in the hierarchy. And on the right, you're going to see an inspector for the element that you have selected. Now, if we have a little look through this list, at the top level, we've got the root of the panel element. This is the same as the panel settings. As we move down, we've got various containers. And you should see we've got this tutorial settings view. This is the highest level UXML component that we have for the settings. Moving down, we have the whole hierarchy of the background, the label, this is the title, the back button, the switch that we made in the last video, and then our drop down. Now there's one other, other element to this. At the very bottom, you see we have this visual element, which is Unity Base Dropdown. This is created whenever you open up a dropdown, and inside of that, we have a container, and this is the actual dropdown component. And if you could see both uh, windows side by side, you'd see them highlighting. As we go further in, we find a scroll view, and then a container element, which eventually we will get down to a level where we have all of the items that we are using in that drop down menu. Now that we've got some visualization over all of the components that we want to change, the main thing that we want to take note of is all of the different class names and all the different classes that are applied to each component. We're going to take these and move them into our USS file for tutorial dropdowns.uss. And as we apply those, we'll start seeing changes within the UI itself. We'll start by changing the hover state of this component, and then we'll move on to making changes to the drop down window, and then finally editing each specific element for its active and hover states. Opening up the USS file, we can see that these are the classes that we've defined so far. So first thing we want to do is try and change the hover state of our drop down. So to do that, we want to define the drop down, and then we add what's known as a pseudo class on the end of this, which we use a colon, and then just type in hover. So this will now only be applied when we hover over the drop down class itself. We can then put in some brackets. And inside of here, we'll just define the same um, styling as we have for the input field itself. So I'm just going to copy that from above. And just to change this uh, a little bit so that there's actually um, something to see, the border color I'll change from mid to low. Now, if you were to try and use this as is right now, you'll actually see that nothing happens. If you were to go and test this right now, you'll find that nothing happens. There's a couple of reasons for this. First one, we need the hover defined on the dropdown as that it's the entire dropdown component that the mouse hover um, event is being called upon. So that includes the label and the uh, item itself. But this actually isn't targeting the actual sort of dropdown uh, item that you would expect. It's targeting that 
parent component type. So we do need to actually apply this uh, further down. Now, I still haven't found what I think is the best solution for this list of classes that are on that visual element. So that's actually going to look a little bit more like this. And now if we go into our Unity project, should see that the hover is still not working. Let me just work out what's going on here. Okay, so turns out it's not a drop down component, it's a drop down field component. And with that change, back to Unity, we'll find that the hover now just changes the highlight of the border to be this lighter color. If we click, you can see that the drop down has changed color again, and we're still using these colors. If we just go back to the code briefly, we'll copy what we've done before. And instead of hover, we're going to use the active pseudo class. Once again, jumping back into Unity, we can see that that is now persistent. Next step, we want to try and tackle this box. So to do that, back into the code. Okay, the first class that we want to modify is going to be the Unity base drop down underscore underscore container dash outer. And if you were to look inside of your toolkit debugger, you'll see when you have the drop down open, it's the second layer with Unity base drop down being the very top visual element in that hierarchy. That top level is the entire screen. The base drop down container outer, this is the first part that actually makes up what you see on screen. Inside here, we're gonna control the border around that component. So in here, we're gonna have border radius. And I'm gonna set that to 10 pixels. And then border width, which I'll set to three pixels. And last but not least, the border color will set to one of our variables, highlight mid. Now in a bigger project, I would probably be looking at um, putting all of these border radius and widths into their own variables in the same way that I have for the colors. But for the purposes of now, this is fine. If we save this and go back to Unity, we'll now see that all of the uh, text has disappeared, but we have now got a faint outline you'll be able to see of the border um, starting to come into play. Don't worry about this white, we're gonna fix that in just a moment. Back to the code. Next step is Unity Base Dropdown Container Inner. This is that white background that we were seeing, so we can now change that. And for that, I'm gonna have background, color, and I'm gonna set that to another variable of highlight, and that's going to be full. And just so that it matches up with the, the rest of the border, we'll give that a border radius as well. And we'll match that to the 10 pixels of above as well. Save that, back to Unity. And now you can see we've got a box, the correct background, and we've got the selected border. There are a couple of things you could do for the style here. You could make that border match the same as the active border above. I might do that off camera, uh, but for right now, this is starting to look like what I want. And I'm now sort of gaining more control over the elements that I'm dealing with. Next step, I'd quite like to see the text again. So we'll just fix that. So in here, when I showed you the debugger at the beginning of this video, when we went all the way to the bottom of the graph for this component, the list of items that we had, we could see that their class was unity base drop down underscore underscore item. So using this, we set the color. So color on its own is the font color. And we're gonna set that to var gray at two, which is our 
light whitey sort of color and then also to try and match with the other text I'm just going to set the font size as well I'm going to set this to 18 pixels once more back into unity this time you're going to need to restart your play open up settings click on the drop down and now we can see all of our text it's now up to the right size and everything's in the right color to be able to see it against the background next this blue uh, for the highlight doesn't really match the scheme that we're going for so for that very similar to what we were trying to do with the drop down field before but this time we can just use the unity base drop down item and apply to that the hover pseudo class and in there we can set a background color so that's all it's using to a var and we'll use highlight low just so that it doesn't appear when you click on any particular item I'd like it to stay as that low color we'll just copy that and add not just the hover but also the enabled pseudo class if we now go back to unity and restart go into settings we now got control over what that last highlight is the last thing I'd like to modify in here on the item that's selected you might be able to see up here there's a little tiny check mark this is based on the resolution that the component was before I'd like to make this a bit bigger and make sure that it's going to be centered with the components that I've got so if you were to look in the uh, hierarchy in the debugger you'll find that the item uh, the unity base drop down underscore underscore item uh, component has two parts to it the first one being the label that we've been manipulating so far and the second one is a unity base drop down underscore underscore check mark so we'll just make a quick edit to that as well so unity base drop down item except we're not going to use item we're going to use check mark and in here I'm just going to set the width to 16 and the height also to 16 I want to keep that as square so that it doesn't start stretching the component in any way I'm also going to set a line self to center this will make sure that it's always going to be kind of center onto the text save that return to unity and we can now see that our check mark now a little bit more visible you could set the size to be bigger and I'm sure there's ways that you could set it so that it will dynamically resize but for the purposes of what we're trying to do now and controlling specific components this is sufficient so now we can select any of our options and it will move the check mark everything styled pretty well the last thing I have noticed there is still the blue color from the unity style to fix this we will go back to the code it turns out when we added active this actually should be enabled if we change that we'll find the actual input field will no longer have that blue border when selected you might want to set this up in such a way so that it does have some form of distinction uh, from the hover state if you were to enable um, controller support and so that as you move through the menu items using your controller you can see what it is that you're um, going to select but for something that's based purely on, on mouse I would leave this the same the other part that we we'll want to change is using drop down field enabled we'll also want to change the unity pop-up field label on the end and we will just copy the color as well that's then the color of the text for the title okay having just tested the label turns out in the same way for the input field itself if you do drop down enabled you do need the entire list of classes on the title label to select it correctly 
so I've pasted all of those in here set the color and if we jump back into unity as we select things you can see that everything's remaining nice and stable and as you'd expect well that brings us to the end of this video thank you very much for watching again if you'd like to see a dedicated video on the debugger window please do let me know down in the comments if there's any other videos you'd like to see me make in the future also please leave those down in the comments please remember to like and subscribe and i'll catch you next time